So I just want to uh, review a couple more things about the um, uh, Ontario model planes, OMP Hobby, M2 helicopter. Uh, chiefly, um, I thought I'd go over the OpenTX programming for it, because I imagine some people, if they're thinking of flying it with OpenTX, would be interested in that. Um, I, I do just want to mention one other point that I didn't mention in my outdoor um, flying uh, checkout of this uh, helicopter. I ordered it from OMP Hobby in the States and they sent it to me via UPS. Um, they didn't specify what shipping they were going to use when I ordered it. Uh, ordering anything from the States, from my point of view, when you're living in Canada via UPS is just deadly. They charge extortionate fees and it, they should just you just never want to use UPS if you can possibly avoid it because their brokerage charges are outrageous. Um, I, I had to pay, I paid a shipping fee to Ontario, on, on uh, Ohio model planes when I ordered this, but then I had to pay another $126 to uh, UPS to get the package from them. Uh, more than half of which was just fees to UPS themselves. Uh, the, the rest was taxes and things to the Canadian government. Uh, I've found this is always the case if I order anything from UPS overseas, uh, that sometimes the UPS fees are more than the cost of the item was. Uh, so I would never, ever, ever use UPS shipping if I could possibly avoid it. Postal shipping, if they do, a lot of the time when you order stuff through the post, you don't even get any taxes or whatever collected on it. And if they do collect taxes on it, I believe they charge a standard brokerage fee of $8 now um, via the post. Whereas, uh, you know, UPS charge something like $70 for the brokerage, their, their brokerage fee. Anyway. So, uh, you know, uh, it isn't always clear how things are going to be shipped, but UPS is certainly a method to avoid if you possibly can. Um, if you're ordering anything from overseas to Canada, I couldn't speak for other countries. But uh, Anyway, let's look at the OpenTX programming for this, uh, for this helicopter. Um, this is, again, for my Jumper T16. It wouldn't be too different for any other OpenTX uh, transmitter, and we're looking at it in OpenTX Companion. Um, I've got a timer here which is conditional on the throttle, where are we, logical switch for the throttle being above minus 80%, that just starts up a timer. Um, I'm using switch F as my throttle hold, so I've got its hold position reversed, its alert position reversed because I like it to be in on hold when it's away from the back of the transmitter. I'm um, flying this with a DSMX satellite at the moment because I didn't have a Futaba it can also take an S-Bus receiver uh, and uh, they were shipping uh, Futaba S-Bus receivers with some of them and indeed they've said they will send me one now they, I t checked with the uh, Ontario on Ohio model planes and they had said they would include the Futaba receiver with it but I didn't get it but they were very uh, helpful about it when I contacted them about it they said yes they had promised it and they would send it and they're sending it via post now, but I didn't have a Futaba receiver at the moment, so at the moment I'm flying it with a DSMX satellite, so I'm actually um, uh, flying it with, D uh, with DSMX 11 milliseconds. Um, we don't use the heli page for it because it has a built-in flight controller, so it does not need the heli page. We have four the standard four flight modes defined, flight mode zero, which is the default if no other flight modes conditions are met, and that's hold. Flight mode 1 is normal conditional logical switch 1, flight mode 2 idle up 1 conditional logical switch 2, and flight mode 3 conditional log logical switch 3, and these switches are condition these logical switches are conditional on the throttle hold SF being back which means throttle hold off and SE which is my flight mode switch being in the back position for normal, middle for idle up 1 and forward for idle up 2. Um, my inputs are defined uh, aileron elevator throttle rudder that's of course not the normal spectrum order but that's the order I've got them defined in my transmitter um, and that's what works with the you know the the the, the t16 and the in and the, mo the internal mod multi modulars I've got it at the moment um, I know this is a teeny bit confusing. I mean, it would actually be going out to the spectrum transmitter with throttle on channel one, but if you do that with the T16, it comes out all wrong because the multi module is remapping the channels. Uh, the multi module is inherently remapping the channels from your the order defined in your transmitter to the order that spectrum expects. 
Certainly at the moment, I believe Pascal said something about he was thinking of changing that or at least making it an option in the future that it wouldn't do it automatically, but at the moment it does, so you have to have it correct. Um, I've got my throttle. I've got two inputs dependent on the throttle stick. Input 3 and input 6 are both dependent on the throttle stick. Um, the um, <laughs> I don't know why my PC is complaining that it's pausing, but I hope it's not messing up the recording. Um, the the throttle input is has four lines, each dependent on a flight mode. In flight mode hold, it's driven by curve 7, the throttle hold curve. In flight mode 1, normal, it's driven by curve 1, the throttle normal curve. These are the curves. Flight mode 2, what we're saying here is that this line only applies in flight mode 2. Its source is the throttle stick and it is driven by a curve which is curve 2. We have chosen curve 2, TI1, which is the curve I've defined for I throttle in idle up 2. My second input dependent on throttle is for the collective, um, which has three lines dependent on three, three different curves. A pitch normal curve, a pitch idle up one curve, and a pitch idle up two curve. I am making the pitch normal curve also apply in hold mode so that I can see the blades moving when I move the hot throttle stick even though the throttle is in hold. They won't turn because the throttle is in hold, but I can see them moving through the pitch. If we look at these curves, that's the curve for thr THN throttle normal. This is the curve for throttle in idle up 1. This is the curve for throttle in idle up 2. These are based on suggestions in an OMP uh, PDF manual that I downloaded. This is the uh, pitch curve in normal mode, which is basically based on theirs, although I think I may have modified it a little bit myself, because um, I think they had more, slightly more negative pitch in the low area, which I didn't particularly want in normal mode. And then the pitch curves for idle up one and idle up two are essentially just straight lines. That's not actually an accident when I think about it. This, you'll notice that in the idle up one curve, they've got a, le a little bit of positive pitch in the middle. And that was actually in the manual. That's not, an, that's not a mistake I made. That's actually in the manual. That's what they suggest. They suggest almost in 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 idle up two. Whoops, sorry, that's hold. In idle up two, they suggest a completely straight line for pitch. For some reason, in idle up one, they want to have a almost a straight line, but with a teeny bit of positive pitch in the middle. And curves. This is for throttle hold, where we're just holding the the the, um, the throttle down at the minus a hundred. And uh, the we've got gyro channel five. We're putting it on switch B. Switch B back will be plus 100%, switch B in the middle will be zero, and switch B at forward will be minus 100. This again is based on what the manual says about stabilization control. Um, so your back position will be ma will be basically the maximum stabilization. Uh, and your forward position will be stabilization off, essentially. And then I've got rates programmed here on the mix page. I'm putting 50, 50, 75, and 100 rates conditional on switch G with all with 30% expo on L aileron and that, well, lateral and horizontal cyclic channels one and two, which will be your lateral and longitudinal cyclic, you know, your tilt sideways, your tilt forwards. Uh, not doing anything to the throttle, the throttle gyro and pitch I'm just passing through here. All I'm doing here is putting on rates essentially, and I'm putting a 80, 90, and 100 rate with 10% expo on the rudder. Um, again, I believe that is recommended in the manual. And what am I doing here on the output page? I'm naming the outputs aileron, elevator, ele elevator, throttle, rudder, gyro, and pitch, just for clarity. And I'm reversing aileron and rudder, which is what I need to do for this spectrum uh, satellite receiver. If I switch to a Futaba receiver, the reversals may be different. You've always got to check the reversals. It's hard to predict. I, 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 well, I'm sure there is a way of predicting it, but I can't entirely predict. Um, it's very common, I find, when you're going from with the T16, the, the open trans, the open TX. Um, transmitter that I'm using and the internal multi-module I find with spectrum uh, 
any spectrum receiver I pretty much always need to reverse channels one and four but uh, but I don't just I don't assume I always check that they're actually working correct correctly well of course it's a bit hard to check with the rudder on this because you can't check until you try and take it off really because um, it's uh, it's just a motor driven rudder so you can't see what the rudder is going to do until it does it and I think that's almost everything in the programming all except of course the special functions where I've got switch F overriding the throttle channel 3 to minus 100 and that's switched on that's not necessary as you can probably notice because the uh, the uh, we, we're already uh, pushing the throttle to curve 7 which is and curve 7 is always minus 100 anyway so strictly speaking that's redundant but I prefer to do it I'm playing throttle held and throttle active sounds when switch F and switch moves backwards and forwards. I'm playing um, for the three logical switches that control the flight mode. I'm playing sounds that correspond to the flight mode, normal mode, idle up one, idle up two. Uh, switch B is my stabilization switch. Um, it's playing sounds basically the closest I could find. Stabilized mode, acro mode, aero 3D mode. Uh, my switch G is my rate switch, so I'm playing low rates, mid rates, high rates. Um, oh, switch H is overriding the gyro to 100%, and that's on. That's essentially like a panic type switch. That's the momentary switch at the top right on the T16. What that's saying basically is, if I push that switch towards me, the helicopter will go into stabilized mode, even if it's not otherwise in stabilized mode. How well that actually works, I don't know. I didn't get round to testing that in my initial. I was just doing it in hover test, so I haven't got into more advanced testing. Um, but that's the idea of that, that it would work like a panic switch and uh, and push the helicopter into stabilized mode if it wasn't otherwise in stabilized mode. Um, switch D I'm using to reset timer 1. I would normally tend to use switch H to re reset timer 1, but since I wanted to use switch H as the... Um, sort of panic stabilization switch I've moved my reset of timer 1 to switch D and uh, oh, oh and that's just to go with the stabilization the, 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 the over the switch H panic thing it's playing the sound stabilize when that's pushed back and that's all I've got in my special functions and I believe that's all of the open TX setup for this helicopter. Um, I believe it should do everything okay, although I, I as you saw from the little uh, outdoor um, trial, I haven't really done anything but just basic hover testing at the moment. Um, but I believe that should, uh, that should provide a complete range of uh, programming to fly this helicopter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below and I'll attempt to respond.